Welcome everybody to the worshipping and prayer community of St. James in Barton and in Eagle. Although our church is open for private prayer on Sunday morning, 9 till 12 noon, and Wednesday afternoon from 2 till 6, it is not yet open for corporate worship. However, we can, through technology, offer you the opportunity to worship and pray together with our community through our video service. This video service is now available on a DVD disc, which can be delivered to homes in Barton on Sunday morning. If you know of anyone who would like to use this service and has not access to the internet, please contact the church wardens. For fellowship, you're invited to join Zoom coffee at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Whether you are part of our regular community or a visitor, we warmly welcome you. Now, let us take a few moments of quiet to prepare ourselves for our worship. Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you in this Sunday service from St James's Church in Barton under Neewood. Thank you very much for the invitation to join with you. Of course, I would have loved to have actually been physically present in your beautiful church. But I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for sustaining the life, the prayer and the service of the church during these difficult times. And I want to say also what a great joy it is to be with you to celebrate the patronal festival of your great saint, St. James the Great. More of him later. Let us worship. Welcome. Lord, we come as a community of hope. To, to hear, hear your, your words, words of encouragement. We come as community of need to, to receive, receive your, your healing. healing. We come as a community of faith to receive, to receive your, your abundance. abundance. We come as a community ready, ready to, to receive, receive your, your word. word. We come as a community willing, willing to, to share, share all we, we have, have in your name. name. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Now for our first hymn, I hope you will all join in at home.
Let us join together and say our prayer of penitence. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Gracious, Gracious God, God, forgive, forgive us, us when, when we, we take, take for granted, granted all that, that we have been, been entrusted and blessed, and blessed with. When, when we, we fail to acknowledge that we have more left over than others have to, to begin, begin with, with forgive, forgive us and, and change our hearts that we, we may become, become people who give, who give generously, share abundantly and live simply to your, your glory. We ask this, this in Jesus' Jesus name. name. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit. Amen. The Collect for St James's Day. Merciful God, whose holy apostle St James leaving his father and all that he had, was obedient to the calling of your son, Jesus Christ, and followed him even to death. Help us, forsaking the false attractions of the world, to be ready at all times to answer your call without delay. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can we now join in and join with the Peruvian Gloria? We are most grateful to the Czech Valley churches for permission to use this video. Epistle is taken from Acts chapter 11, reading from verse 27 through to chapter 12, verse 2. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. This is the word of the Lord.
Today's Gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 20, reading from verses 20 to 28, and is entitled, A Mother's Request. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the wife of Zebedee came to Jesus with her two sons, bowed before him and asked him a favour. What do you want? Jesus asked her. She answered, Promise me that these two sons of mine will sit at your right and your left when you are king. You don't know what you are asking for, Jesus answered the sons. Can you drink the cup of suffering that I am about to drink? We can, they answered. You will indeed drink from my cup, Jesus told them. But I do not have the right to choose who will sit at my right and my left. These places belong to those for whom my father has prepared them. When the other ten disciples heard about this, they became angry with the two brothers. So Jesus called them all together and said, You know that the ruler of the heathen have power over them, and the leaders have complete authority. This, however, is not the way it shall be among you. If one of you wants to be great, he must be the servant of the rest. And if one of you wants to be first, he must be your slave. Like the Son of Man, who did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to redeem many people. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We say what we believe in. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we celebrate the Feast of St James. Now there are several figures in the New Testament with the name of James. The Gospels makes mention of James, the son of Alpheus. There is reference in the epistles to James, the brother of the Lord. There is one passing mention of James the Less. What a great name. But your saint is James, the son of Zebedee the brother of John, and John and James together were nicknamed Boanerges, the sons of thunder. And whoever the other Jameses in the Bible may be, your James has generally been known as Saint James the Great. He's called the Great, really, to distinguish him from all the other people called James. But what a name, James the Great. And the gospel passage we heard read this morning um, suggests to me that certainly at some time in his life, he really thought that he deserved that title of the Great and he had to be taught another way. Let's think a bit more about that gospel passage because I think it teaches us something really important particularly something that we've been learning at a time like this ourselves what really counts in life what it means to be really great so it's a rather unattractive story to be honest Um, James and John's mother comes up to Jesus and says I want you to do something for my sons Oh, what do you want, he says. You can almost hear the weariness in his voice. 
We should um, remember, incidentally, that this is Matthew's version of the story. In Mark, uh, I suppose in some ways it's even worse, James and John themselves come up and ask a favour. In Matthew, they ask their mum to do that for them. What do you want? Jesus says. Oh, he said, we want to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. It's what you could call um, an inappropriate request to sit in your glory with you. Why do they ask this? Or perhaps why do they get their mum to ask this for them? Well, I think if we were using the language of today, we could say they want to be celebrities. They want to be famous. They want to be known. They have been seduced by first century Jewish celebrity culture. They want to be seen they want to be talked about. And Jesus has to explain that his way of living involves much more than that. They have to learn to do the hard stuff of discipleship, the costly, the painful stuff, the stuff that puts other people's needs and interests ahead of their own. Whoever wants to be great, he says, has to be the servant of all. And isn't that just a amazingly timely message for our own situation? Over the last weeks and months, so many in our nation, in our communities, have been faced with the reality of suffering and death in the same way that Jesus and his disciples were faced with those harsh realities as they travelled up to Jerusalem. And with that reality check, we have begun to realise the shallowness of what is so often counted as greatness, as renown, as celebrity. There are James and John wanting to be seated on their thrones in glory. Here are celebrities tweeting their likes and dislikes. Here are people of no particular talent being vastly overpaid for moving around figures on a piece of paper or on a computer screen. And these are not the ones who are truly great. We have come to see, I believe, over these last months, that the truly great are the people who are so often ignored, who are taken for granted, the ones who really need to be renowned, honoured, celebrated, are the workers in our health service, in our emergency services, delivery operatives, staff in supermarkets and shops, undertakers, care workers, and so on and so on people who have been laying their lives on the line for us all without drawing attention to themselves, simply getting on and doing their job day by day, serving others. These are the ones that we should really call great if our values had not been turned upside down. Well, hopefully as a society, we will learn to reevaluate our views of what is important and what should be rewarded. But as soon as I say that, I know that doesn't feel quite right, because of course they should be rewarded and recognised and celebrated. But the kind of people I've been talking about, the real saints of God, the real servants of the community, they don't help out in that way in order to be rewarded. Despite the lack of recognition, Despite the hardness of the work, despite the dangers they often face, they do this simply because it is what they are called to do, because they are on a quest to help and to serve others. And that wish to serve, whether you are recognised or not, whether you are rewarded or not, that simple wish to serve the other 
is the opposite of a celebrity culture where everything is done for the sake of recognition and adulation. That desire to be seen, to be looked up to, that led James and John or their mum to make such a preposterous request of Jesus. So I have to tell you, people of Barton under Needwood, that James and his brother John got it bad, badly wrong. They made a terrible mistake. They were looking in the wrong direction in their lives. But the good news, and the reason why you should be proud to have James as your patron saint, is that he learnt a better way. And we so often get it wrong, and we need to learn a better way too. We know that James learnt a better way to live because the Acts of the Apostles uh, tells us that Herod had James, the brother of John, arrested and killed by the sword. Why? Because he stuck with the faith of Jesus, because he carried on living his life in the way that his Lord had showed him, because he was a faithful witness and a disciple. And this is when James must have really come to the recognition of what it means to be James the Great. What does that mean for us? Well, once we've learned that lesson of true greatness, we need to stick with it. The way of service is the way of greatness. When we care for one another, when we put the needs of the others first, when we seek to follow Jesus in his way of humble service, whether we, rec whether we are recognised or not, that is when we truly become the Church of Jesus Christ, a community of disciples like James who have learned how empty is the way of celebrity and how rich and fulfilling is the way of daily service of our neighbours. Well, that all sounds pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Let's just get on and do it. But there is, of course, one more thing to be said. We can recognise that that is a great way to live. It is a noble ideal. It is indeed the only way really to live. But we have to know also that we can't get there simply by trying very, very hard, simply by willing ourselves to be kind, humble, serving people. It takes more than that. It takes grace and power from beyond. James learnt the lesson of service only by staying close to Jesus. He was part of that little inner group who were present with the Lord on the mountain of transfiguration, present with the Lord in the agony in the garden of Gethsemane. He was transformed by his Lord's grace from being a selfish glory seeker to being a faithful witness to the gospel. And we will be transformed by God's grace not by our own efforts, but by keeping close to Jesus through reading the scriptures, through being faithful in prayer, through receiving the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood in Holy Communion. There is a great prospect, a roadmap for us in our life together as we reassemble as a church. And I pray that as you follow that path of faithful discipleship, keeping close to Jesus like James did, so like James, as a community of serving disciples, you may learn what it means to be really known as the great. Dear Lord, hear us as we pray. Open our hearts to you to receive your love that, so that we, in turn, can give that love to others. Lord, you sent Jesus to come to us as a servant, not as a proud ruler. 
Give us, we pray, that same commitment to serve, to encourage, to share in life's joys and tragedies, to care and love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of the Covid pandemic, when we have spent more time reflecting and appreciating our world, each other and what is important, give us that same spirit to continue to care for your creation and our relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hear so much on the news about wealth, power and greed in our world, which always impacts more on the poor, vulnerable and especially on young people and children. Help us as a global community to fight for justice and equality for all. Give us fire in our hearts to create the conditions for all people to prosper, irrespective of their colour, gender, financial position, religion or race. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who have suffered during this time of isolation. Thank you for our NHS, for key workers, for volunteers ready to give of themselves in the service of others. We also remember those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Help them to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of family and friends around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you in our brothers and sisters. Lord, open our ears that we may hear the cries of the hungry, the frightened, the oppressed. Lord, open our hands that we may reach out to all who are in need. And Lord, open our hearts that we may love one another as you love us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the peace with some words from St Paul. We are the body of Christ. By one Spirit we were baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We are bound by the love of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and, and also, also with you. you. If you have somebody with you that you can share the peace with, please do that. If not, and you're on your own, then virtually share the peace with me. Peace be with you. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. So in faith and trust we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been wonderful to be with you this Sunday morning. And now let us pray as we face the week ahead for God's blessing to be with us. May God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit strengthen, sustain and empower you in your hearts, in your homes and in your community 
today and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our special thanks today to Bishop Michael for joining us on this, our paternal festival. Our thanks also to you, our congregation, for joining us today. We hope to see you again next week. <laughs>